Welcome back to Math 103. This is video number 16 on measuring power. In our example based on the Electoral College, where originally the quota was 36, but now we're asking, you know, question mark, what should it be? We're asking now what should it be such that Delaware, with only three electoral votes, actually has veto power. Now that can be achieved by making the quota very close to the total weight, and the total weight 29 plus 20 plus 14 plus 3 equals 66. And only 63 of that is coming from the other players, which means that if we set the quota at 64 or 65 or 66, then we will actually give Delaware veto power. Because with any of those quotas that are higher than 63, the other three players combined don't have enough votes to pass a motion, they will need Delaware to join in. Okay, so in other words, if the quota is higher than 63, then nothing can pass unless Delaware also votes yes. That means that Delaware would have veto power. So the conclusion here to this discussion and other recent discussion is that altering the quota but leaving the other weights unchanged can have, doesn't always have, but can have a very significant impact on the resulting power distribution. We've already seen this in other contexts involving Bantaf, but we see it again. This is a very important idea in this subject. Now let's remember an earlier problem type, an earlier example of a weighted voting system with four players, let's call them A, B, C, and D, where the complete list of winning coalitions is given, and here it is, but without any numerical information about quota and weights. And we saw earlier that that was actually enough information to determine who is critical in each winning coalition. And, of course, once we found out who is critical in each winning coalition, then we could answer all our other favorite questions from Bansaf's point of view. Now we wanted to compute the shapley schubik power distribution of this same weighted voting system, given only this same starting information. So let's carry out the reasoning process here. So here are three particular sequential coalitions. This is not the full list of sequential coalitions. There would be 24 sequential coalitions on the complete list, and on the next slide you will see them. But for now, we're just going to focus on these three for the purpose of understanding how you find who is pivotal in each one without numerical quota or weights. We start by covering up all the other players and asking, is A alone a winning coalition? A had the first idea to vote yes. Has the motion already passed? No, it hasn't. A alone is not a winning coalition. So we proceed to ask, how about AB? When B joins in, does that suddenly turn the coalition into a winning one? Yes, it does. Therefore, B is pivotal here. Now we carry out the same analysis for the next sequential coalition. We ask, is C alone a winning coalition? No, C is not. How about CB? CB is not a winning coalition, and so B is not pivotal here. We go on to ask whether D is pivotal. That means asking if CBD forms a winning coalition. Yes, yes CBD does form a winning coalition. It's written here in the order BCD, but that's okay because up here, written in curly braces, this just means three players simultaneously all voting yes for something. Okay, so here we're saying C votes yes, then B votes yes, then D votes yes. So the order mattered here, but as of this stage of things, B, C, and D have all voted yes, and this list tells us that B, C, and D all voting yes by the time that has happened, the motion has passed. So this means that we do have a winning coalition, and therefore D really is pivotal here. I realize that's a little bit confusing, that down here in the angle brackets, order matters, but up here, inside a set of curly braces, order does not matter. Right. Let's go on to the last example here. B alone does not form a winning coalition, so we go on to ask, how about B together with D? Does that form a winning coalition? No, BD does not appear on our list. How about BDA? Do they form a winning coalition? Yes. When B, D, and A are all voting yes, the motion passes. Therefore, A is our pivotal player here. 
It's important to practice this reasoning process. So before going on to the next video, answer the following questions. Find the Shapley-Schubach power distribution for this weighted voting system that we've been discussing. Here is the again the list of winning coalitions. And it computes how many times more power A has than D, according to Shapley and Schubach. Right, we've actually already answered this for Banzaf. We want to see what Shapley and Schubick have to say. So, so here is the complete list of winning coalitions together with the complete list of sequential coalitions. And your mission is to find the pivotal player in each one and find the overall Shapley-Schubick distribution and then how many times more powerful is A than D.